Hey guys, thanks for the responses I got to my last video. I never thought so many people would watch me talk about a John Donne poem, but we're back to regular content today. These are the top five books I read in February. This year's reading has fallen a bit flat in comparison to last year. By this time into 2017, I had read four books that made it onto my best of the year list, and I haven't read a book that I felt that strongly about so far. So I'm hoping that changes soon, but I'm still a big fan of these five. Going in no particular order, I'm gonna start with the poetry collection Inside the Wave by Helen Dunmore. This recently won the overall Cost to Book of the Year award in the UK. It was published last year and was Dunmore's final book before she died. So there's a bit of external pressure here, this being a collection about dying, written while the author was dying. You're set up a little bit to, to feel like a jerk if you don't like it, but I really did. In every poetry collection there are going to be poems that do nothing for me, and this was no exception, but I appreciated the connecting threads throughout. References to the Odyssey and Greek mythology, and water imagery. This idea that life ebbs and flows but pushes us all towards the underworld in the end. It's all done in a way that that's wonderfully unpretentious. Dunmore considers herself a common sort of person, and one of the poems is about the separation in Greek mythology between Elysium, the afterlife for heroes, and the fields of Asphodel, where, where the common yokels go to spend the afterlife. Dunmore writes the poem as though she's in the fields of Asphodel, and mentions going on a picnic and drinking tea and riding the bus, so you imagine that in Elysium they have limos or something like that. Two other poems completely arrested me. I'll leave links below if I can find them. One is called My Life's Stem Was Cut, where on learning that she's terminally ill, she compares herself to a flower that's been cut and put in a vase. The other is my absolute favorite. It's called A Loose Curl and opens with these lines. I have never known you easily hold my hand as you do now. We sit here for hours. So you can read that as I have never known you too easily hold my hand as you do now. But without the two, that first line can be read alone. I have never known you easily representing a relationship that has always been a struggle somehow. The poem goes on to mention the Arctic and whales, and then includes these lines. The ice is so fragile, you must spread your weight, like this, an inch out to the abyss, which is such a beautiful image for navigating a difficult relationship, spreading yourself out over the ice and crawling forwards for fear that, that you're gonna break through. I write in poetry collections. I like marking phrases or words that catch my interest, so I'll show you to give you an idea, and you'll see that some poems have a lot of markings and others have none, which, like I said, is completely normal, and I don't treat individual poems like they're all or nothing. Sometimes it's worth reading for one or two striking phrases, so I absolutely recommend this collection overall. Next is the debut short story collection, Back Talk by Danielle Lazarin. I was sent a copy of this by Penguin Books and really enjoyed it. I'm not gonna say much here because I'm gonna have a review coming fairly soon for Open Letters Review, but this is definitely for you if you like realist short story collections about everyday life, especially ones that focus on the perspectives of girls and women. There's such a nice ambiguity to the relationships in these stories. The family dynamics are nuanced, and friendship, romance, and sexual attraction don't have clear boundaries. I will say that I thought the opening story was one of the weakest, so if you do pick this up, make sure you read at least the first two before deciding whether it's for you. Next is a novel that's been so popular, it's getting a bit of a popularity backlash now, which I think is always a good thing. I'm suspicious of universally positive reviews because there's no one book that works for everyone, but this one is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden, and I'm happy to be in the majority of people who love it. This takes place in the northern woods of medieval Russia, and broadly is about the tension between on the one hand, a village girl named Vasya, 
You can speak to all the little protective spirits in their house and woods. And on the other, a priest from Moscow who believes in the Orthodox God and preaches that it's evil to worship other beings. I've heard the writing of this book criticized as both too simplistic and too lyrical by different people, which actually doesn't surprise me because I think its main strength is the way it finds several stylistic middle grounds. It merges the clipped style of fairy tales with these beautiful, evocative lines about the Russian landscape. Now, I'm not a, a huge fan of landscape writing in general, but the way Arden describes the sun and clouds and snow, I could feel the icy wind on my face and viscerally understand the harshness of life in this time and place. There's also a middle ground with the characters where they're somewhere between fairy tale figures and flesh and blood people, which gives the story this blend of feeling immediate and timeless. It's not the individual characters that stand out so much as, as their interactions. So for example, the way the father views his various children um, and the sibling relationships in here are, are also wonderful. The priest character Constantine could have been made out to be completely contemptible, but he's not. And I, I found him quite interesting as well as his relationship with Vasya. There's a bit of the hellfire dynamic of, oh no, I'm lusting after her, but I'm a priest. But it moves beyond physical longing. Constantine sees the lighthearted, energized way Vasya moves through the world and understands without ever acknowledging it that he'll never experience life that way. Through her eyes, he catches glimpses of a world beyond what he can personally imagine. So I loved this book, the characters, the writing, the atmosphere, almost everything. I found the climactic action scene kind of messy and unnecessary, but I already got a copy of the sequel, The Girl in the Tower from Delray Books, and I'm saving it to read for when I'm in a slump. Fourth is something a bit different for me, Becoming Madeline, a biography of the author of A Wrinkle in Time by her granddaughters, who are Charlotte jones Voigtless and Elena Roy. This is a short biography intended for children and adults that follows Elangle up to the time that she's around 40 when A Wrinkle in Time is finally accepted by a publisher because it was rejected by many at first. Full disclosure that Elena was my boss a few summers ago. She runs creative writing workshops for kids and teens for a program called called Ritopia. I'll, I'll link it below. It's a great organization. And Lena is, is one of those warm people who really believes in the power of reading and writing to shape children's lives. I'm not going to say too much about this right now because like with Backtalk, I'll be doing a review of this for Open Letters and we'll link it below when it appears. But the best thing about this book is the wealth of primary sources included, the journal entries and letters and photographs and even report cards. I think it's a perfect gift for anyone who loves this author. And lastly is a book that everyone and their dog has been talking about on booktube, The Mermaid and Mrs. Hancock by Imogen Hermes Gower, debut historical fiction set in 1780s London. I was sent a copy of this by Harville Secker, which is part of Vintage, and a full video review will hopefully be popping up in your feeds this weekend because I have a lot to say about it. It. So I know I only properly talked about two books in this wrap-up, but you'll be able to see in-depth thoughts about the other three soon. So in the meantime, let me know if you've read these or if any of them have caught your interest. Bye guys. Thanks for watching.